Are you somebody that is a moment artist or are you somebody that plans on being here for the next 40 years? Even if that means you never win a Grammy, fucking piece of metal. Even if that means you never do DIY. DIY, shout out to the community. One of the recent guests was rapper Wiz Khalifa, and he speaks on why rappers are becoming streamers and also why rappers in particular are struggling with the sales of their music, the streams of their music. And I think it's some really interesting things that he highlights here. People are more seen now by like their antics and the content versus the music and shit like that. Well, you got to look at what sales actually are, right? Sales are streams. A lot of those playlists happen once or twice a day. So they're making us go down because they're not adding us to enough ish to the point where it's going to get streamed enough. The majority of streams that you see, especially with stream streaming songs that do really, really well, are the result of playlists. The playlists have a monopoly on a lot of the numbers. He even speaks about, depending on how many playlists you're on, that could determine by the day what you're actually doing, numbers-wise, sales-wise, and all that good stuff. And people are happy with like getting playlisted, but you got country artists, their whole album is getting streamed. Or their whole catalog is getting streamed. This world is so much bigger than just our hip-hop world. I love my hip-hop world. I love our hip-hop world. But it's so beneficial when you step out for a second and look at other genres. Because if you stay so much in this box, in terms of just looking, you, don't have, you ain't got to go make country. I'm not saying that. And even look at the buying habits of, say, a country music fan. You may be surprised how many of them still listen to an artist's whole catalog, even if it was something that they had in high school. You see, because country music is not as dependent as hip hop is on what's new, what's hot, what's relevant, artists are able to enjoy longer careers. Artists are able to make an impact in the 90s and still go sell out a festival in Las Vegas, still go sell out festivals in nashville because it's not dependent upon oh man you know og you just got to get a hot feature you got to get the right producer you got to get the it is not as dependent upon that as it is within hip-hop instantly is going to outdo you in a streaming market when you got like you got one or two songs that's cool but you can't compete with somebody with a catalog or with more songs than that and the playlist and it doesn't do shit for you know it, it it helps the song sell it like numbers wise but it doesn't do anything for your numbers of like progression and a lot of that stuff you have to make it up on the back end you have to do reels you got to do tiktoks you got to have this many Crazy. views on youtube for it to even matter in other places it's not really all of that so it's just not translating late. like the numbers aren't coming together for people to win in hip-hop and they're accepting that you know what i'm saying you got to figure out what you're going after if you're going after the catchy song or the the hit you know what i'm saying that's everywhere that's viral might not sell that many fucking tickets the bigger reality says most people don't buy records especially in hip-hop let's keep it real i thank god everybody's not like you i'm thankful that in this independent space as much as you may feel like the world only exists within your perspective there are more than enough for any of us to make a living off of. We don't need a hundred thousand. We don't even need a thousand. I had a conversation in an interview here with my guy, Brian Z from Audio Mac. Good but point. short money is not long money. And if you take short money, you're not guaranteed long money. Ooh. You're not guaranteed anything. Actually. Yeah. And so it really depends on the artist. Mm -hmm. uh, I always separate them into two categories. Are you a moment artist? or are you a career artist? Mm. If you feel like you have 25, 30 plus years in this business, don't take any easy money because you're playing the long game, mm -hmm. right? You, you can afford to be more patient. Your uh, time horizon is in decades. If you're a moment artist, which means your, your focus is on riding a wave, Right. There's a trend or a fad based on a production style or a vibe. And you feel like you can capitalize on that immediately. Mm -hmm. And you're not concerned about where you're going to be in two years, let alone 10 or 20. Mm -hmm. By all means, jump in head first, grab the bag, make the money. Maybe you could take care of your family right. uh, for, for a generation. But you can't have both and right. you have to know which one you are. What side of the line are you on? Are you here to figure out what is going to appease the masses? Are you trying to find those specific people that when you speak and when you make the music that you love, that really moves your soul and rocks you at your core? When you're talking to those people, they say, shit, what you got here to, what you got here to buy, fam? Nah, and I'm still not content. T-shirt. Till I'm dominating every single continent. What size you got? I, I'm, I'm a double XL. Ah! 
y'all should go stupid. You don't think then use your common sense. All you got is XL? Shit, I'm gonna buy that for my daughter. I did your wire and I know that I'm a proud of When they play the new king, all the DIYs go crazy. All the DIYs go crazy. When they play the new king, all the DIYs go crazy. All the DIYs go crazy. That's what your people not gonna do. And we gotta talk amongst ourselves. Are you somebody that is a moment artist as Brian Z is talking? Or, or are you somebody that plans on being here for the next 40 years? Even if that means you never win a Grammy, fucking piece of metal. Even if that means you never do an X amount of streams or even sales, but you make enough to be a middle class artist as Brian Z says, you're at least able to make minimum wage. And that's what makes you happy. We overvalue and tap dance and do the ugliest ass dancing for casual fans. Niggas is short side. I'm not rocking with that. You got a packed show, you might not be on all the playlists yeah, and shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. You just got to figure out where the fuck you want to be at. Can't have it all right now. And Pun predicted a long time ago. Yeah. He said, man, I watch all the rappers. Everybody start trying to get into streaming and podcasts. And I feel like yeah. now it's like real normalizing. Like I just seen Tiger got a kick deal. Mm -hmm. You know what wow. I mean? It's like, it's like, damn, this really about to be the thing. Like you have to do it. One thing that I'm not going to allow, especially in this era of independence, are two people to dictate the future of where I take my music, how I do my business, and so forth. The first, I don't believe in the notion that the customer is always right. There are people who are wrong all the time, but because they bought something from me, everything they say is... is on point now. Sounds conditional. The customer's not always right. Matter of fact, you can do backflips for a customer, changing your business and the very foundation that got you their business at the expense of somebody who has paid and plans on paying a whole lot more money throughout the year. Their customer journey is very different. There's not a million of them, but hell, you might have a thousand of them that pay a hundred bucks aka a hundred thousand dollars a year. We overvalue. So I won't take advice from that person, the customer that's telling me what I should do for my core audience when my core audience tells me what they value. Two, I will not take advice from any artist who has not even tried. The internet has given us a lot of pros, a lot of cons, especially when it comes to communication. I think that it's great that we're having more communication than ever as independent artists all around the world, but everybody does not deserve a podium. I had to earn minds. Some of y'all have seen me go through some ugly periods, dig through some dirt to get to this goal. Everybody doesn't deserve an opportunity to speak about where this culture should go. Some people are just guests in this culture. They are people who see things from a scarcity mindset, who can't even envision doing this for the next 20 years. That sounds like work to them. It's people that when you give them information, they don't want to do it. They want you to do it for them. Life is short and I am just as entitled to my time as you are entitled to yours. I won't take advice from the person that won't even have the audacity to go out there and do it. You can save that shit. Cause the truth of the matter is, what I lose in you, I gain in focus, in providing the value for the people who are going to be here no matter what. As long as I don't lose my way. I value them. 338 of y'all in here right now. I appreciate you being here, but there was a time that you weren't. And if I say something that offends you and get you all in, uh, riled up. Know that my intentions have always been the same since the beginning. It's not to run any propaganda. If it is, it's a belief in yourself. That's it. Those are my thoughts though, DIYers. You let me know what you think. DIYers. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop, stop being greedy. Peace.